What if I told you that the gateway of hell is actually in North Dakota? <laughs> What's up everyone? It's Erica and welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new to my channel, like I said, my name is Erica. Nice to meet you. I make a lot of spooky and creepy paranormal slash supernatural type of videos and I would love for you guys to subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Today's video is a super exciting and I know, I know I say that in probably all of my videos, but today's video is very, very compact with a lot of interesting shit going on and I want to talk about it before I get into the content. So you guys are probably wondering what the fuck Country Spooks is and it's a new series that I am starting on my channel and I'm so excited. Guys, literally, I've been thinking about starting this on my channel for the longest time. I've just been like waiting for the, like the best moment to actually introduce it and start it, but I think it's going to be really fun. So before I actually get into this video, I just want to kind of brief you guys on what it is that I'm talking about because I know I talk a mile a minute and you guys are probably just like, air, chill. <laughs> so for Country Spooks, I plan on deciding on a very like kind of local and very popular urban legend or ghost story per state. And I want to do this for every state. So yes, guys, that is 50 states. I plan on choosing maybe one or two really popular myths, urban legends, maybe ghost stories per state and talking about them. And I'm super excited because A, you know, I love this shit. I love talking about the supernatural and like paranormal and things like that. And B, I love learning. I love researching. Like it gives me an opportunity to do research and to also share it with you guys because I know that some of you guys might not like doing that kind of research. You might just like being told about it. So yeah, that is the essence of my um, new series on this channel. That's why it's called Country Spooks because I'm going to be talking about all things spooky all around the freaking country. <laughs> but before I keep babbling on, I thought that the best way to start off the series is to be talking about the gates of hell in Tagus, North Dakota. So just to talk about the location for a little bit, Tagus, North Dakota is one of the very many <laughs> small towns, small and abandoned towns in North Dakota. Now I didn't know this, but North Dakota is really popular for having these like kind of ghost towns and, and ghost towns as in like there's nobody there. Um, very empty, um, it's kind of unexplainable almost, it's a phenomena in itself. The thing that's interesting about Tagus is that it never really was a big town or even like a decent sized small town. Literally their highest population was in the 40s and literally it was 140 people. Like that is it. That is all, that's the highest number of residents in this small town. Now today, if you are wondering, today there's maybe 14 residents left in the town. So it's really like on its like last limbs, basically. Um, some people consider it inhabitable just because of how destroyed the small town is. So because of all this vandalism and all these things that other people from different small towns have done to this small town, this is where the idea and like the rumor of like the stairway to hell comes from. So in Tagus it was rumored that there was a Lutheran church that actually doubled as a hotbed for Satan, Satan worshippers. And now I say it's rumored because there's really no proof in considering how small the small town is, like literally small the small town is. Only a handful of people know, can verify this, if it's true or not, but it's not there anymore. Now what's interesting about this is a lot of locals and a lot of people around Tagus, not necessarily in the, town of Tag like the small town of Tagus, say that they believe that these Satanists that came there to worship were actually lured there by like the energy and the power in the church. They believe that the church was kind of, because it was the gateway or like the stairway to hell, it was radiating off this negative and powerful energy that was kind of contacting Satanists and, you know, devil worshippers all around the country to come and go to this church and unite and open the doors to the underworld. That was kind of what the rumor was. So guys, let's actually start talking about the legend of this. So according to legend, the church was actually burnt down by a bunch of vandals. Like I said, people have been coming in and treating this area completely horribly. But before it was burnt, the reason why people think that this was the doorway or the stairway or whatever to hell was because, it, and particularly it was a place of worship for Satanists, was because on the inside of the church there was an upside down cross. And if you guys don't know, that is like symbolic in the Satanists and you know, all of that in that community. I don't know too much about, you know, um, devil worship and all of that. Um, I guess if that's something interesting you guys want to see or hear about, let me know. I'll make a whole video on it. 
But that's what was inside the church. And that's why a lot of people thought that that was like a place for devil worship. Well, it's kind of like a 50-50 in the community as to why exactly this place was burnt down. I guess the logical and the rational like people in the area thought that it was just because people were, you know, being a-holes and just wanted to burn it down or whatever because clearly this was a very inhabitable small town. And then there's a group of people who actually believed that there were that these people who burnt the church down were trying to prevent from trying to prevent people from like opening the staircase or like the stairway to, to hell or whatever. And so it's really 50-50, but people believe that under the floorboards and into the actual ground and earth was the stairway to hell inside of the church. So there was a very particular part inside of the church that you had to dig, dig, dig to get to, and it would, there would actually be, you know, stair, a staircase to hell. And this isn't like a metaphor for anything else. It really was the common belief in the small town, like people actually thought that. Actually, let me reword that. It wasn't the people in the small town that believed that, it was like the outskirts, like the neighboring small towns that believed that. And I'll get into the people of the town in just a little bit because they are super suspect and super freaking weird if you ask me, like, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> also, it's been said that if you stand in a certain spot in this church, you could actually hear the anguish and the crying of the souls in hell. Like I said, this is all hearsay, so take it as you will, but that's crazy. Now, it's super important to keep in mind that these are just rumors. There's no way to prove if there's like a doorway to hell unless you actually see it with your eyes, and I'm the kind of person who, I'm not a person who's like, if I don't see it, I don't believe it. I have faith in things but this is one of those things where there's not solid or concrete evidence so it's like take it as you will and consider the fact that the neighbor like the neighboring um small towns were fearful and didn't really like tagus because of its reputation so just keep that in mind that these things aren't necessarily true aren't necessarily false however there are witnesses and there are things that people have seen and we're going to actually talk about them right now. So the majority of people who actually go to Tagus are people who are either, you know, tourists that have heard of this story or like they're on some kind of special tour for like paranormal or whatever, or they're just people passing by. But either way, a majority of them do have really bad experiences and they actually have talked out to their are. I guess testimonials, so not proof, but testimonials. Some of the bad experiences that these people talk about are their interactions with hellhounds. Yes, guys. They claim to see hellhounds, and if you guys don't know what a hellhound is, it is basically a supernatural dog. There's, they have different meanings for different like cultures and different regions of the world, but in general, it's a supernatural dog that kind of represents death, and it, either death, like death has happened in the place that they are kind of like marking their territory, or death is coming, and so that's crazy <laughs> and the way that they identify that it's a um hellhound is it's usually very uh, other i'm not explaining it, it's very otherworldly it's not a regular dog and it's not a regular dog simply because of how angry it looks but also their eyes are like a beady red and very evil and very malicious and ready to attack and um people have said that they've spotted these dogs all over tagus and the scariest part about it is that they say that these dogs come come from like seemingly nowhere they just kind of show up and they're just there and that is so like a hellhound like i said if you guys don't know too much about hellhounds they just show up because they're a supernatural dog they don't you know you can't scent them, you can't tell that they're near or whatever, they just show up. One person actually said that there was a, that they experienced a hellhound behind their car and it was actually bleeding, like, the dog wasn't bleeding but it had blood on their tongue, which dripped off and onto the car and there was actual blood there and that scared the hell out of them because right after that happened the dog disappeared, like, as per usual, so that is just something that they've experienced while being in Tagus. Another thing, like I said before, was the residents of Tagus. They are super strange people, and I don't mean no disrespect. Like, if anyone's watching this, for some reason they're from Tagus or they have family from Tagus. I don't mean disrespect, but their behavior is very off. It's um, kind of, it's not, obviously it's not friendly, but it's very, very hostile. Like, they don't like 
visitors at all. They don't like newcomers, they don't like people passing by or even tourists. And there has been instances where people who are just passing by like report being chased out of the town with weapons. Like the residents chase them out with guns or whatever and it's their behaviors are very I don't know how to explain it. A lot of people like compare their behaviors to being very compelled and very like under someone else's control because they're very protective of their place. Like it's a very sacred place. And it's strange because in Tagus, like I said, it's a very beaten down, small town, kind of ghost town, in like not livable place. So if you guys can imagine that kind of place, keep like, you know, think of the one that pops in your head. It's that kind of place and the citizens that are there are very protective of what's theirs. And that's just a little bit strange. Also keep in mind that this town has been through a lot as far as like, you know, the media and the neighboring towns and how um, basically everyone stopped recognizing them as an official town, meaning they have no help, but they get a lot of judgment. So maybe their hostility is because of that, but people said it was very weird and very odd behavior. And of course, they've also experienced very ghostly things. A couple actually said that when they went to the nearest cemetery, the, the actual graves were glowing, like a really greenish glow, and it was really weird to them. And a lot of people say that the energy there is like extremely toxic and negative. Now, if you're an empath, even just a person who's very good or very in tune with their um, emotions and like energy, you would know how that feels. So that's another reason why it's so strange that these citizens stay there because apparently to everyone who goes there, it's a super negative, super scary place, like something's not right, and they don't know why they're there. Some people think that if this theory about it being like the nearest gateway or the nearest stairway to hell is true, that maybe the doors are already open, and that um, those people that live in that area are under some kind of compulsion, like some kind of evil compulsion to protect that place because it's quote unquote sacred. But who knows? But yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you guys liked my very first installment of Country Spooks. Being that my first date was North Dakota, I'm super happy that it was because super interesting. If you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also comment down below what you guys think, but also comment what state I should do next because I'm letting you guys decide what state I should do next for this series. I don't think I mentioned it in the beginning of the video, but I'm going to be posting a new video for the series every week. So next week I'll post the next one. But I hope you guys like it. Like I said, if you guys did, please hit the subscribe button to become a member of my family. And to be notified when I have more creepy uploads like this. Also guys, click on the notification bell so you can be notified when I post more videos. Thanks again for watching. I will see you guys next time.